Lately, we've been bringing you stories about amazing people making a difference right here in Colorado, and we call that our Reflections series. And we want to bring in Danny, of course, to tell us more about our next reflection piece. Danny, this this is so neat. You get to really find incredible people right here in our community. Yes, that's so true. And our next piece is about Ebenezer Norman, an incredible yeah. man who has done some amazing work here in Colorado, and he's actually extending it across the ocean, across the globe uh, to his home uh, country of Liberia. So I guys, yeah, I, I really want to show you this piece. Let's take a look at Norman's story. Hi, lift for Danny? Yes, come in. Okay, thank you so much. Awesome. Hi, Norman. How are you? How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for picking me up in your lift. Thank you. Yes. All right. So I want to talk to you all about the amazing things that you do. So first of all, tell me about your story. How did you end up here in Colorado? Well, um, I, I got a scholarship and I moved um, to the States and eventually end up in Colorado to the school called Regis University. Mm -hmm. I'm federal and I came here and did my first six years of college, my own grab my master. Amazing. At, at Regis. Awesome. Yeah. And you came from Liberia, right? I came from Liberia, yes. Yes. Tell me about Liberia and growing up there as a kid. Well, growing up in Liberia, um, there was one thing that I really struggled with and it was just the amount of poverty and and, and hardship that we grew up with as you know as children. And, and I couldn't believe, you know, you know that that we were we were born in such a place where all the places in the world that we could have been born would show up in, in Liberia, you know, and and it was you no know, school, um, the health system was bad, um, women was treated like second class citizens. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was, it was horrible. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's what led you to the amazing work you're doing today. And that's why we're in this lift right now, too. So tell me all about ND Hope and um, why we're in lift today. <laughs> well, I, I drive lift um, hours and hours and hours every single day. Um, and I take 50% of what I make when driving. And I go to Liberia, build schools for children. <laughs> about how you got started with your nonprofit. I mean, this is something that is making a huge difference in the lives of children back home for you. So tell me about that. You know, growing up as a kid, um, there, were, there were no schools around and we have to jump a lot of hoops to be able to get to school. And so I always, as a kid, I always said to myself, if I, if I ever have the opportunity um, to do something in the world, I would like to focus on education. And, and I learned that there are 244 million children around the world who don't have access to education. And I used to be one of them. So now I feel like I'm the voice. And that what you know inspired me to, to jump in the educational business. Amazing. You've built two schools, right, in Liberia. Tell me about that process for you. Well, the, the first school was, um, the first school got demolished okay. um, but the lo by our local government. Um, that was a big setback for me because, you know, there's a guy who drives hours and hours and hours every day yeah. and took half of his earnings to go build schools and, and the government broke the school down. And who breaks down a school built in one of the poorest country, right? And so that alone um, was, a, was a huge setback for me. However, I didn't give up because I realized that the people before me, people like Susan B. Anthony, or Dr. King, or Nelson Mandela, um, those people really struggle um, to be able to make the world a better place. And I, and I feel to myself that there is nothing going to stop me <laughs> from building schools for children uh, because I think that that what makes me happy, that what makes me fulfilled. This is my life, you know. Yeah. Thank you, guys. I'm super excited to be here. Wow, I mean. <laughs> You guys look beautiful. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. I mean, so. So, Norman, what do you tell the students that are going to your school now that you've spent so much time building and, and building up? I mean, what do you tell these students for their futures? You know, one of my favorite quotes is from Dr. King. And Dr. King said, All of us cannot be famous, 
by each of us can be great. Uh, because greatness is measured by service, and all of us can serve. Right now, I have 820 children in school, and, and now I got over 400 girls. And to me, that's the, the best part, because those little girls in this village um, never had no hope or dream of becoming anything. You know, three years after I go back, um, these little girls are dreaming to be lawyers and doctors and engineers, you know. So I would tell these girls that they can, they can grow up, make sure they pay attention to their schoolwork, become the doctors, the lawyers they want to become, but make sure they give back and serve the community and serve other people in the world. And you go back and visit these students, right? Oh, all the time, all the time. <laughs> you know, I go back in September, or end of September, yeah. What do they say when they see you? Are they so happy to see they, they you? Get, they get very, um, very excited. The parents um, ask me, why am I doing this, you know? And I say, well, I um, believe that someone, someday, stood up for me, you know, indirectly or directly. So now it's my time to stand up for somebody to make the world a better place. What do you tell people, um, whether it's here locally while they're in the back seat of your car or just anywhere when it comes to helping out like this? I mean, how do you encourage people to do so? Well, I think most people, most people want to do good. I think the biggest problem I've learned is that the problems in the world are so big, right? Like, for example, there are 244 million children who don't have access to education. Most people see that or hear that, they don't know how to take their story and put it into a bigger story, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, want, I always tell them, look at me as an example, right? Yeah. Because all I try to do is to help five million children. Yeah. I'm not trying to help 244 million children. I'm trying to do a little piece of the pie. Yes. So we all can play our part by just doing a little, little bit. A little bit at a time makes the biggest difference. And you can support Norman and a new dimension of hope on Friday, September 22nd by attending the No Time to Rest event where you can participate in community conversations with Nobel Prize winner Lehman Bowie. Now just head to ndhope.org for tickets and more information on how you can help.